Hello, welcome back guys. Uh, if you made it all the way through the last video, then well done, you survived. Uh, we're continuing on with functions here, but um, now we're going to move on to something called event-driven functions. Uh, to explain what that means, let me add in a new part. Uh, we're going to add in a script inside of it, as usual. And then I'm going to type out a function. And let's say I wanted to make this part change color whenever it's touched, okay? So I could simply change the property and I would say script dot parent dot brick color and then brick colors properties are a little bit different um, to transparency and things because you need to say but equals brick color dot new or in this case we can just use uh, one of these defaults that are available to us if we want so we can just say brick color dot blue and then it will equal blue um, and obviously if I run that then it would just run straight away and when I run the game, yep, I've got a blue part there. But if I want to make um, it able to interact with the player, it needs to be inside a function. So I have a function, and I simply uh, can call this something like uh, make blue. And the function's called make blue. Uh, it doesn't need to accept any parameters, so it's just going to be empty brackets at the moment. Add a new line. And then we need to type the end to finish off that code block. So, of course, as we know with functions, we then need to call it. But if I just do that, well, it's just going to run instantly straight away. And I want it to be able to interact with the game in real time. And I want the player to be making, to be calling the function, not just inside the script. So, in order to do that, I'm going to say script dot parent so I'm referencing the part and I'm going to press dot again and we've got all these properties but all the way down at the bottom we've got some little ones with these yellow lightning bolts on and these are actually events so we've got child added child removed a bunch of different things but what we're interested in is this one called touched so I can just press enter and that will auto complete for me. So I'm saying when uh, it is touched, I want to connect. And you see there's this little uh, little description it even gives me. And it says registers a function to call each time an event is triggered. It turns a connection object that can be used to undo this registration. So basically what this is telling you is whenever the touched event, whenever that happens, we can call a function with it using this connect. So put connect and then we have these two brackets and it's accepting a parameter and the parameter it, it uh, it's looking for in this case is the name of our function. So we type in make blue and it's already being auto suggested for us. So I just press enter and if I go ahead and play the game, with my character you'll notice it's gone blue straight away <laughs> the reason for this is uh, it's touching the base plate I believe uh, let's let's raise it off the ground uh, and anchor the part as well so there now it's not touching anything and make it a bit bigger as well just for the sake of it so let's try that again and yet yeah, now you can see the part is gray so it's not touching anything and if we go and touch it with the player it'll turn blue just like that so what can we do with that well first off let's make sure that it only is going to look for the player so we can add in a little if statement here and we can say if we need some way to check what the uh, the touching part is so if let's just add in a comment to explain what we want to do here if the part is 
um, a player, then we want this bit of code to run. Now, the interesting thing about this connect function for the touched event is it actually sends in some data and we can capture this uh, by expecting a parameter inside the make blue function and we can simply say part and for demonstration purposes if I simply say print and print out the value of that part you'll notice that this actually has some data inside of it even though um, it might not look like it's being defined here it's already being sent along with this uh, touched event so if I run the game and I'm going to go up to this part and you notice down here I've got left lower leg, humanoid root point part and left foot, left upper leg everything that's touching it and whenever any part of my body touches it it's being registered here so what we need to check if it's a player is we need to check that the player or the model contains a humanoid for example so this is the quickest way obviously we could write an if statement that said if is right lower leg or right upper leg but that would be a very long convoluted if statement so instead we could write something like if uh, script uh, if part um, find first child humanoid then do this code and then we need end do finish off that block and we can delete this bit of uh, code we don't need anymore so we can go ahead and run this and hopefully that should work for us nope that's not done anything that's great ah okay so we need to change that up here part dot parent and then we're going to call this function on it find first child so we're going to look and see if the humanoid is inside of it so play that again and we go up to the part again and it's turned blue there we go so what this is doing is it's checking uh, so gnome code is my character here and it's looking and say the right lower leg is hitting it and it's getting to that part it's going to its parent which is the model and then it's looking to see if the child humanoid exists which is right here if it does exist then it's going to run that bit of code and if not then nothing's going to happen Okay, so that's one quick event we can see there. Um, and we could change any property we liked. So one, uh, one thing you could do with this is you could have a door, for example. Uh, we'll just add in a new part. Okay, add in a couple of parts. Uh, let's say we've got a doorway, something like this. So that can be our door. And we've got some walls like this, okay? And how about we open up this door with this button? We'll make it green for good measure. And so we're going to need a way to access this door. And to do that, it's easier if we give it a name. So we'll rename the door, door, so it's not just called part. Uh, and we'll make sure all these are anchored as well. And we'll go back into this script for our little button we could rename this button if we wanted but it's not really necessary go back into the script and instead of changing its color we could say uh, game.workspace well actually I'm always saying game.workspace as a way of explaining it but you'll notice if I just type workspace here uh, it all completes for me and that's because workspace itself is actually a keyword so we can just say workspace workspace dot door dot transparency equals one we want it to be fully transparent and then we also need to make the door uh, so we can actually walk through it because 
currently it's just going to look like you can walk through it but it's still going to be a part there and there's still going to be a collision so there's a property called can collide and do we want to be able to collide with it no so false and then if we go ahead and run this got this door here we can't walk through it if we go to this button it's then going to open up for us although this is a very very short wall so we could actually jump over if we so fancied so that's two examples of using a touch event uh, now there's a bunch of other events we could also use I can just show you a quick example here if I add in a new script and this time say so I wanted to check players that are joining the game so I have another function uh, call this player joined uh, and this is going to expect a parameter of player and you'll see why in a minute and then we want to just print out the name of player or the value of player and in order to connect with this function we're going to say uh, we need to access this players folder because you notice when my player joins the game my player is suddenly added to this players folder and there's my name right there and when the game is running obviously you'll have all the other players in here but for now it's just me so go back to the script I need to say access the players uh, and I'll say game dot players dot and then I look for an event and there's one called player added now I'm accessing players uh, through the index of game here and there isn't actually a uh, a keyword for players if I just type that in there's no there's no keyword that comes available but the way that Roblox would actually prefer you to access it is something called the uh, service so I can create a variable where I can say player equals game dot uh, sorry game is function and you get service and then we type the name of the service we want which is players and you'll notice there's a lot more services that are available to us here if I see all the ones that are being suggested on the auto prompter uh, there's a bunch of suggestions look there's even something for VR and this is the way that you access all the services that are available to us so in this case we want players because you'll notice that over here which in the explorer tab this is everything that is indexed of game now we haven't got quite a lot of services available to us like lighting uh, workspace obviously players but it's quite a small list and everything if you need to access anything that isn't on explorer you can use it through this line right here which is quite handy so here I just I've created this variable called player or let's change this to players and that equals the uh, the service players so this essentially I'm just saying game dot players really but this is how Roblox would prefer you to refer to the service so we say players dot player added when that event is triggered then we want to connect with that function player joined and close off the bracket and of course this sends a bit of uh, data along with it to the function which in this case is the player so if we go ahead and run hopefully we should see in the output the name of my player which in this case is gnome code so you could use this to build some kind of admin script for example where you could say if player dot name equals uh, so I can for my name then print admin has joined right so this would be a very simple kind of admin script and if I was to run that then yeah admin has joined and then I could do some kind of uh, give me some kind of tool for example 
Now, I don't think we'll go through um, creating an admin script or anything right now. That's just a, an example. And of course, there's many more events you could use. Hopefully, that's give you something to get started with. Uh, hopefully, it's explained the point. If not, as always, leave a comment down below and I can maybe try and give you some help with that. Thanks for watching. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe to PewDiePie. And if you're feeling generous, throw one my way too. Thank you.